Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Tomorrow Dies Today. Tomorrow Dies Today is brought to you by Mooney Bin Entertainment. It's for one to seven players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 120 to 300 minutes. In Tomorrow Dies Today, you take on the role of General Goodman, a supervillain, or one of his top nine henchmen. Take over various areas of criminal enterprise, gather resources, recruit faceless henchmen, and discover doomsday missions to enact your plan of global domination. Three different asymmetrical game modes allow you to pick whether you and your friends will play a 100% cooperative game known as Syndicate, or sharpen your backstabbing daggers and play the cutthroat version of the game. Or play Mayhem, allowing up to three teams in a free-for-all, winner-takes-all. And how those teams are formed are totally up to you. In all cases, you have to plot out three moves in advance. Building squads to complete missions, gather resources, and harvest spoils in the most efficient way possible. All with an end goal of completing the Doomsday Plan and or achieving the most victory points. Oh, not victory points but villain prestige points. The game focuses on strategy and negotiation. There are no dice and the mechanics reduce random chance to reward you for relying on your wit instead of luck. Now, we are going to take a look at the basics here and based on which game mode you choose, the player count and time required to play will be variable. In the cutthroat version of the game, which we'll primarily focus on, one player will play as General Goodman. This is a tough role that involves management of resources, leadership of the team, and balancing of potential betrayals. Goodman is also a mentor, picking out players falling behind or less familiar with the game and working with them to help find their feet. This is mutually beneficial as Goodman succeeds when he has a good team. Goodman does not have a pawn on the board and cannot create squads. His power lies solely with the ability to manage and influence his team. The rest of the players will pick named henchmen. Each has their own theme, attributes, special abilities, and betrayal triggers, which offer a unique global domination experience. Now for a quick look at setup. Now this game has a fair amount of setup but it also is variable based on the player count versus what mode of the game you're doing and so forth. But we'll look at some of the basics. The main board here is known as the war room. There are three central tiles and each of those central tiles are surrounded by six others. Now you have General Goodman's lair as one central tile, you have the CI headquarters as the other, and you have Interpol as your third tile. Now these are all going to be different areas of the board obviously, but your henchmen, your characters in the game are going to surround Goodman in his lair. And if you have less players, then there are spots for tiles and you put some of the generic bases in. And up here at the top, you have around Interpol is some of the resource missions and things you're going to be doing and gathering different things from. And we'll talk about what all those different resources are in a minute, but you'll set this up and as well as you'll set up the doomsday missions, which is going to lead you into the end of the game. But, and these will go face down, but again, they're resource driven. You need to have the right type of squads in order to achieve these different types of missions. Now there's a couple extra tiles. You have the technology track and you have the doomsday clock, which is one of the game in triggers as you count down, the game will end. And then you have a base where you can retreat from everyone if you need to, uh, those kinds of things. So those are some of the basics of the board. And with your characters, you're gonna have your own special character, a named henchman, if you're not playing Goodman. Again, important to note, if you are Goodman, you don't have a character sheet per se, you don't have a tile, not a tile, but you don't have a pawn or a character on the board, but he's going to be influencing everything that happens. There are tokens to represent your different resources in the game. There are five different types. You've got infamy, corruption, espionage, 
funding, which is the money in the game, and data cache. And there are six types of faceless henchmen represented by meeples. You've got soldiers, assassins, thieves, hackers, scientists, and fixers. And these are all placed around the table with easy access for everyone. Also, the different henchmen, the faceless henchmen, are found at the bottom of your player boards. Let's take a look at those next. And it's important to note that starting out in the game, there are a different set of starting resources specifically for Goodman, but that's again all based on player count and which game mode you're playing. Now, this is your character sheet. And at the bottom on the right are those faceless henchmen I was talking about with their different stats and abilities that will augment your stats and abilities of your character. And this is where it becomes very important because as you're creating your squads, you're going to need all these different types of abilities in order to complete missions and complete the doomsday missions. So that's really your main goal of this game is to get those things and those henchmen and those groups in order to complete missions. Sometimes they're so difficult though, that you might have to rely on your fellow players at the table in order to complete those missions, but you do have affinities that will aid you in completing missions, so to say, but really what they are, they're gonna give you special bonuses or double the resources you get when you complete missions. So you've got them for your resource missions and for your doomsday missions based on what character you're playing, they're all gonna be very different. But a lot of times, like I said, you might have to team up with others to complete missions. Now, there's also betrayal triggers on your board. These are very important because if too many of these things happen, then you could potentially betray the whole organization and potentially as the betrayer, you could win the game. So that's something very interesting, a twist in that cutthroat version of the game anyway. And you have special abilities for every character. You wanna keep an eye on that throughout the game because they're gonna really aid you in everything you're doing. So that's the basics of what's on your character board. But on the back of the board is a really nice bio on each of the characters. A lot of great, fun information, really thematic. And that's one of the things here is everything about this has that huge amount of theme to it. And you have a couple decks of cards you need to be mindful of. You have Goodman's Directives, which you'll lay out, as well as R&D. These are the technologies and gadgets and things that you're going to be buying or building. And the thing here is you're gonna be checking them every round of the game to see if you can complete any of these things. So keep those in mind. And of course, then you have your various other meeples and tokens and all that. But you have these really cool 3D figures that I have the plastic versions for, really well done, but in the final, they're looking to do those metal versions of these figures, really, really cool. All right, so let's jump in and give you a broad overview of what this game looks like. Now, there's a lot to this game, but let's look at some of the basics. And if you want a more in-depth look at how the game plays, go check out the publisher's How to Play video. It really is fantastic. Now, there's a handy reference card that leads you through the rounds, stages, and actions. But here are the basics of what you're doing in each of the three stages. First, we have scheming. This is where you'll plot with your frenemies, negotiate deals, build your squads, buy or build gadgets, and plan three moves ahead. So next up, we have villainy. And yes, this is where you get to be a villain. Go out and complete missions, execute all your plans, initiate conflicts with other squads, harvest spoils, so once you're in this phase though, you can't change your plans, so scheme well. Lastly, we have monologuing, where you'll get to recall your squad to base, tithe and or negotiate with your boss Goodman, claim your villain prestige by bragging about all your evil deeds, and the thing with Goodman is that the player who controls him can incentivize actions and side jobs for private objectives, both of which will earn you VP. All right, so let's take a closer look at the squads and the henchmen. So a lot of what you're doing in this game is completing missions. And of course, there's a ton of negotiation going on between you and the other players and Goodman. So you gotta keep that in mind as you're completing missions for Goodman, or perhaps you're turning betrayer and doing things for yourself. But really, again, you're gonna be creating squads and you have three possible squads you can create. And basically you'll pull the meeples and based on either negotiating with Goodman or getting them from missions you've already completed, 
you'll put those meeples with your character and you can move them around in squads however you see fit for each round of the game. But you will have to pay a cost in order to deploy squads. And based on the number of faceless henchmen in the squad is gonna determine what kind of cost it will be. Now, you have your main character who has stats and every henchman you add will add additional stats. And that's what you're looking for on these missions. You're looking for the stats and if you can complete them. Now, again, you might not have enough stat resources, so to say, in order to complete those missions. So you might have to rely on others to help you. And then there's that whole negotiation again and how you share the spoils and so forth. And how you share the spoils with Goodman. Oh my gosh, yes, that happens quite a bit because you might have to borrow a particular type of faceless henchman from him as long as you give him something in return at the end of the round or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting negotiating tactics throughout the game. And really that's probably one of the strongest aspects of it that really shine through in the theme of the game is that not only are you being a super villain, but it has that huge feel of espionage and spy type of atmosphere to the game, really intriguing. But again, you're gonna be relying on those henchmen. So you hope to pull together enough in a group in order to complete missions for the resources or when you get to the doomsday missions and you're trying to complete those. So those are obviously harder with higher rewards, but ever closer towards Goodman's goal for end of the game. And again, his goals are gonna be varied based on the game and so forth, but you are really using those henchmen to your advantage not only for him, but for you as well, because you are trying to grab victory points as well. So there's lots of different resources and things you're gonna be gathering. Obviously you need money to continue to deploy and move your henchmen around the map and avoiding agents and alert levels as you travel around this war map. And so in this cutthroat version of the game, the named henchmen lack the drive and vision of General Goodman and instead seek to be the most villainous villain to ever villain. Doing so will secure them a place as a top henchman in Goodman's New World Order. So if the henchman remains loyal to the cause and Goodman achieves world domination, the named henchman who collects the most villain prestige minus their active betrayal triggers is the victor. In the case of a tie, the henchman with the most completed objectives, not including completed disloyal side jobs, if there is still a tie, the henchman with the most resources plus gadgets wins. And if there's still a tie, the henchman with the least betrayal triggers will win. However, if there's still a tie, then it's 10 paces of dawn with pistols, and that should resolve the matter. Now, if the player becomes a betrayer, they are now working contrary to the rest of the table and seek to foil Goodman's plans. They must run the doomsday clock down to zero, thereby foiling the supervillain's plot and creating a vacuum for their own nefarious vision for the world. Now, this means the game either ends with Goodman and a henchman achieving victory or with Goodman failing and the betrayer, if there is one, being the only victor. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. and Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, the thing that strikes me most about this game is the fact that how incredibly thematic it is and how you are truly negotiating at every step with every player at the table, potentially multiple times, to get through those different missions and to do what Goodman wants. There's a lot of back and forth, I really like it. And you can even bribe, basically bribe, the different officials when they try to come into your area to not hurt you or damage you, because you can become hurt in those ways. But again, there's so much to this game, I couldn't cover all here in a timely fashion. So you definitely should go check out their full how to play. It is fantastic. So hopefully this gave you a taste of what this game looks like. And if it looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.